This film forms a journal of the second part of our Around the World sailing saga. We are still in the Pacific Ocean and chose Tana in the archipelago of Vanuatu Islands as our next destination. In Resolution Bay, we could hear the incessant booming of the island's volcano. Missionaries had had a huge influence on them, but not as much as their worship of Prince Philip, who they see as a god, and the cargo cult. During the war, they saw aircraft descending on an American-built airstrip and saw gifts coming from God. Now, every Friday night, they sit in the jungle and sing hymns and pray for the return of more cargo. The language here is fabulous, Pidgin English. For example, Egg Beta Belong Jesus Christ is a helicopter. Titi's Belong Basket is a bra. Black man, white man, bang bang, noise come out is a piano. Me push, you pull, wood fall off is a saw. We were stunned by the welcome of these people and their culture. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is your name? Lynette. Lynette and Anne. <laughs> Anne and mm. Maxine. Ma Maxine. 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 That's a good name. <laughs> Very good name. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi guys, how are you? Mm -hmm. you? You're very busy. <laughs> Making a new roof. A roof for the house. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This little one? Yours? Give a four-year-old a machete. Why not? Oh, come and see. Come and see. Oh, we're lovely. We're lovely. <laughs> hey. Hey. Isn't that good? Very good. Good boy. <laughs> Hello. That's so Hello. cute. Hello. This <laughs> yeah. Is the water good? Good water? Yeah. Yeah. practice with the girls. Our harmony was debatable. So where's the church? Where's um, where is your church? Down at the village. It's down that way. I didn't see. I mean, the uh, STA church. Oh, okay. At the school and the Presbyterian. So it's all Presbyterian. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, that was. Oh, what's this morning? Mm. We had to go to Immigration and Customs on the other side of the island, an adventure. Crossing a volcanic landscape, a moonscape. The driver was having fun, but some of our passengers were not. Bye! Bye. 
Factory. And this is the oven. Boy. Oh yes. Yeah. In the bakery, I found my long lost grandchild. Same here. Are you? This banyan tree is hundreds of years old. Tesco's have something to learn about veggie presentation. <laughs> we went up to the volcano to see what we could see. Very misty though, but the power of it was scary. Our boat was covered in ash that took years to clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is a preserved village where the locals put on a great display of their culture. <laughs> <laughs> to experience mainland Australia while Gordon and Murray did the nine-day sail to Cairns where I rejoined them.
Gordon had a lot of boat maintenance to do here. Cairns is a bit hippy dippy and bizarre after the experiences we have had. Very easy and touristy. Love the music. There you go. It's like bagpipes. The indigenous people of Australia are noticeably absent in mainstream life. When I did see them, they were walking on the grass verges, sitting under trees around shopping malls, and seemed not to be even aware of the concrete and modern life around them, like time travellers. We pulled into a bay on Lizard Island due to very high winds of 35 knots plus. After one night, we moved on to Escape River, where we were warned by a local pearl diver not to leave the boat due to the presence of a very large crocodile. We had a wonderful sail inside the Great Barrier Reef and witnessed Australia burning. For hundreds of miles, we saw the glow from the many bushfires and the smell of smoke was ever present. It's half a Humpty Doo here. We're heading to the second half of Humpty Doo. Wallaroos, wallabies, paddy melons. After Humpty Doo, we went for a trip down the Adelaide River to feed the crocs, accompanied by Frank, my Come cousin. On. Your mate Arne would do the work for. Yeah. <laughs> Nero is the king of the southern reach of the river. He's about six metres long. He's about the same size as Mr. Hannibal. Hence wow. the game. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you teasing me like this? Oh, oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, what a beautiful beast. Oh, he's too focused on you. Come back a bit. Come back a bit. Oh, he's a big boy. See how far back his tail was there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a front leg. He knows. Hello, Maruari. How are you, Maruari? Everyone was looking for relief from the intense 40 degree heat. These massive termite hills all faced in the same direction to control their internal temperature. Nice. 
Oh, oh, buffalo slime all over your hands. <laughs> <laughs> In Darwin, we bought all the necessary courtesy flags for the next part of our journey. The owner of Flags International took us to the Legion Club. After one week in Darwin, which was very hot and uncomfortable, we headed for Bali. This is the Indian Ocean. Ancient temples and sculptures abound. Bali is deeply Buddhist, as you can see. Ceremony pass with the rice and then eating. This is making coffee, which tasted terrible. We had intended to head straight for Singapore, but decided to call into Borneo to see the orangutans. These strange wicker and bamboo structures were seen floating about everywhere. Here we are, going up the river in Borneo. Local fast boat one hour up river to enter the rainforest. The sounds and wildlife were amazing. Eventually, the ranger managed to entice some orangutans down from the forest canopy for bananas. The word orangutan means orange man, and you can see why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Look, he's taking the whole rock. Uh, Monty. Monty was uh, 23 years old. This one's taking most of the bananas. <laughs> <laughs> can like until 60 like 60 a young yeah. but from from the uh, wild one less than 50 oh, okay so life is hard in the yeah. wild yeah. <laughs> The mothers and babies keep well away from the males since they are known to kill the babies. She's off because a male is approaching. Heading back down river we saw many species of monkey and bird.
Mm -hmm. Oh, and <laughs> Thunder was rumbling and soon the rain began. The orangutans made umbrellas from large leaves and tried to shelter under our brollies. <laughs> She wants to go into the umbrella. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. Hey. Yes. 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 <laughs> Further downstream, we saw proboscis monkeys with their distinctive long noses. Eating young. Here we are back on board Equinox after the most amazing day. We've been um, in a fast boat. We went up the river to the Bornean rainforest and quite appropriately got completely soaked. But we've seen the most amazing um, wildlife today. We've seen gibbons, we've seen um, orangutans, we've uh, they've walked by us, we've seen the most incredible jungle life. We've seen every form of ant and gigantic butterfly and it's just been an astonishing day altogether. But uh, we're a bit sleep deprived because uh, last night when we were sound -o, about half past one this morning, four local boys came by and two of them actually boarded our boat which was a very frightening experience. Um, and they were rather drunk but uh, it took a lot of persuading to get off the boat and to go away. So. Maybe it's just to be sort of taste of things to come as we go past Somalia, but uh, I think if anybody got that close, um, at Somalia would really be in serious trouble. So yeah, the first time that's happened, and uh, I hope it's not repeated. But apart from that, Borneo has been the most amazing experience ever. Just a wonderful time. The sound of evening call to prayer echoed around the river every evening. Route we cross the equator again from south back into the northern hemisphere. I so just crossed the equator. Hi! <laughs> 
I'm at Raffles and I'm going to have a Singapore sling for all you guys out there who said have a Singapore sling at Raffles for me Anne. Mm. So that makes about 10. But I think I'll just make do with one. In the long bar, I had the obligatory Singapore sling and was horrified to learn that it is traditional to throw the peanut shells on the floor. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it? Yes. It's beautiful, dear. It's Christmas. I could buy it's another Christmas, boat for that. You know. Oh, we don't need another boat. We can have this instead. <laughs> Take out your credit card. <laughs> you can put your one out there and be a small one, why can't you? I found the hustle and bustle of Singapore very overwhelming after months at sea. of Raffles Marina where we were moored, a bit different to some of our previous moorings. Along the very busy Malacca Strait. Ford anchor, and the distance there is Singapore. And over the side here is Malaysia. Langkawi, although Muslim, still had Santas and decorations up for Christmas. Cameras from everywhere. <laughs> Hello. This was very tickly. <laughs> <laughs> the snake was wrigglier. Thank you very much. Well, oh my here we go. <laughs> I don't like heights, but the view was amazing.
Here we are at Anchor in uh, Bhutan in Thailand and uh, we're in a just a sandy bay I sent everyone in for a swim before dinner and then remembered this was shark feeding time. Ah, brilliant. Yeah. It's filling up with water. Oh. <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm. Oh, My amazing, mask yeah. is filling up all the time. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Placing real gold leaf on Buddha, he would have been horrified. This is our um, marble tile which is going to go on the lotus seat, which the big Buddha is sitting on. So, just over there. This is our family piece of marble. <laughs> in Phuket. We went on to Sri Lanka. The stick fishermen are happy to pose for a price. Here's a stick fisherman. Got my fish. Yes, two fish. Gordon and I went up to a Buddhist monastery in the hills where we had a blessing ceremony. <laughs> we were invited to a local wedding, which was an interesting and lovely experience. Oh, it's good. was fun. Men and women don't dance together. We had to go to Colombo to renew my passport and get visas for India.
I had been here years before and stayed in the Taj Hotel, which you can see, but it is very different sailing into a place rather than arriving by plane. <laughs> This is where Vasco de Gama died. A typical example of the Portuguese influence in this part of India. This is called Chinese fishing. 700 years before the Chinese people make their design of the net in China. These inland waterways are well worth a visit and the locals make great use of all the resources, including dredging sand from the riverbed for building purposes. They're very uh, strong. Yeah, very strong mm -hmm. and flexible. Okay. Wow. You have to remember. They also made rope and rugs from the available materials. <laughs>
Muhammad, our guide, was a great character and took us to the empty quarter where we spent a night under the stars except a sandstorm developed. Most unpleasant. Come now, stay there, drink. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, this is our first morning in the day. <laughs> this bad man made us sleep in the sand, and then the wind got up, uh -huh. and we got buried. Mm -hmm. And um, well, anyway, this is the oh, there's a wee beetle look coming across the sand. It's all over sandy and stuff, but it was great fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Mohammed's gone. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, I see what you just said. We formed a flotilla of 20 boats of varying sizes and nationalities to give each other some form of protection as we passed the Somalian coast. The slowest boat led. For the five days of this passage we maintained close formation and kept radio silence where possible. The coalition forces were aware of our position and we could hear incidents occurring from communications from ships being attacked by pirates. Very scary. We were asked to lead the flotilla into Aden by the little boat whose skipper had had enough by now. Okay. Here we are in Aden. All the other boats are right here. With military permission, all the convoy boat crews had a celebration party on the dockside, but no alcohol allowed. Yeah, right. This part of Yemen is very volcanic and bleak, but they showed us great hospitality. Wow. Huh. Where do you go? Vegetables, the vegetables. They are very proud of their 2,000-year-old reservoirs. I'm
ليس ومن ليس اصله بيمني ليس بعرس انها قلعه القاهره التاريخيه في تعز وقلعه القاهره التاريخيه في As Futula spokesperson, I was interviewed by the Yemeni Minister for Tourism on Yemeni television in the presence of the military and presented with a valued plaque of honour. And uh, in our time here, we have managed to visit many of the beautiful places. We have been up to see the tanks, the cisterns, we have been up to the crater, um, and in our travelling, we realise that this is a very beautiful country. We were escorted to Victoria Park and had a private tour of the museum where we saw the colourful burqas which up to 100 years or so ago all Muslim women wore. The black is a recent introduction. <laughs> He said maybe it is age of 500 years. Oh, their age. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, goes there. Yeah, there you go. Come on. The star maybe 28. Oh, wow. Yeah, but. Uh, she come to <laughs> Yemen, but sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. That's nice. She can come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also my brother, my yeah. sister, oh, wow. another sister. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How did they? Uh, my cousin, my. Really? Yeah. Wow, you have oh, do you live? You live here? I live in Aden. Yes. yes. I am from Hadramaut. Right. I born in Aden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm working. Uh, Accountant. I'm an accountant. Oh, right. accountant yeah. I yes. I'm found uh, okay. social founder for yeah. development. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah. Here we are in Eritrea. We anchored opposite the former imperial palace in Massawa, which had latterly belonged to Haile Selassie, and shows the scars of the civil war within this country as it separated from Ethiopia in 1991. We visited the capital, Asmara, high in the hills, passing through many interesting villages. Asmara is an Italian town in the middle of Africa. The Italians ruled from 1885 to 1945 and left a heritage of espresso, pizza and architecture. Waiting for you. Mm. Oh, Coming across now. Yeah? Oh, this one's good. This is us coming into Suakin 
in the Sudan and it's the most turquoise water I think that we've seen so far. Unbelievably coloured turquoise. These ruins at the mouth of the bay are about 800 years old, but being made of red coral have not weathered well. <laughs> After the colourful dress of Eritrean women, we are now back to the more radical black burqa, similar to Yemen and Oman. <laughs> the people here have the most welcoming smiles. Right, let's walk some more, yes. do yeah, some yeah. more oh. shopping. Yeah. The children love to see pictures of themselves and were great posers. We made a bit of a mistake in dropping anchor in what we thought were Egyptian waters. The Egyptian Navy screamed up behind us yelling at us to pull up our anchor and follow them because we were in Sudan. I should have known by the group of masked men on land pointing AK-47s directly at us. We passed a Russian warship on our way into the Suez Canal. Passage through is a bit boring since there is nothing but sandbanks to see. We stopped midway along the canal and hightailed into Cairo for a few nights. I think everybody knows what these are. I'm going to stop for you to let you take a very, very good picture of us. Please, wherever? Please. Photograph, photograph. No. So <laughs> not that. This is the new mosque of which they are very proud. Peace, I just want to speak English. And his teacher called him. Why did he come here? And actually, right there, where is Muhammad Ali Martin? Can I show you? The old 
Prague Mosque is equally impressive and the sounds of Cairo are haunting. After exiting the Suez Canal, we headed for Greece, but we didn't film much since we felt the trip was virtually over. We were, after all, in Europe. The Corinth Canal is the most expensive piece of water on the planet. Here we are in Pescara Marina at last. Um, Gordon, terrible journey getting round here from uh, Brindisi. Really big seas and horrendous uh, weather. But as you can see, everything's calm, quiet and beautiful. Another lovely, typical... Um, it's really good to be here. This marks the very end of the journey. It's been an amazing one. And now it's just upwards and onwards with the next phase of our lives. And thinking about the future, so it's been amazing. <laughs> And this poem forms the summary of our trip around the world in Equinox from 2008 to 2010. The poem's entitled, I Have. When first we talked of going to sea around the world, him and me, my heart was filled with dread and fear, which worsened as the time drew near. But I'd agreed to do the trip. I told myself, just get a grip. You'll be okay, just get up and go knowing that it might not be so. Our goodbyes said we released our lines and headed off for sunnier climes, though first enduring five months of rain and the Bay of Biscay to get to Spain. Gently at first, in little hops, sailing by day with overnight stops, the miles began to accumulate. My fear, though, would not dissipate. In Las Palmas, things were pretty frantic, preparing to cross the big Atlantic. Suddenly, in my heart, I knew this was a bit I couldn't do. So I shopped and cooked and vacuum packed, made sure the fridge and cupboards were stacked, flew to St. Lucia full of shame and met other women who'd done the same. We found our rooms and unpacked our bags, then gathered together, all of us wags, wives and girlfriends, discovering over a pina colada that we weren't cut out for the Spanish Armada. The common denominator, truth to tell, though we'd sailed far and done pretty well, was the fact we'd all got into a state undertaking this voyage to please our mate. Now that this voyage is almost complete, I look back on that time as my only defeat. I faced mighty seas, forces eights and nines, surrounded by lightning and battling with lines. But more than this, oh so much more, I found the joy of an approaching shore. I've smiled at whales and they've smiled back. I've sat by a volcano as it blew its stack. I've watched something happen to my old man, from short back and sides to long hair and a tan. And then what the hay, he had nothing to lose, when in Hiva Oa, he got some tattoos. I've crouched in the jungle, all fingers and thumbs, weaving baskets with women by the light of glowworms. 
I've watched stunned to silence as out of the trees descended orangutans which brushed by my knees. I've drank evil brews not minding a bit that it's traditionally made by being chewed and then spit. I bargained for molas and dug out canoes and traded for bananas with a pair of old shoes. Danced barefoot on beaches where tree frogs call and a huge brilliant moon is my disco mirror ball. I wobbled in dinghies and fallen in once. Though the water was warm, I felt such a dunce. I've been in a convoy from a man past Somali, which is known by many now as Pirate Alley. And having survived it, came through safe and free found myself interviewed on Yemen TV. Oh, the people I've met in these 40-some lands with their welcoming faces and waving hands, the like-minded sailors who, when this all ends, I'd like to imagine will always be friends. These are the memories more precious than gold. I'll conjure them up when it's wet and cold. And I thank dear old Skipper for helping me through the times that were difficult, quite a few.